ending or nightmare? Good evening. A couple in Leeds have been given official permission to effectively design their next child. Because Zayn Hashmi, their son, has a rare blood disorder, they'll be allowed to specially select a second child through IVF with the right cells to treat him. We'll ask one of Britain's most innovative and controversial fertility doctors, where is all this leading us? And as drugs move through Afghanistan by the sackful, why is the war on terrorism creating not heroes, but heroin? And on Newsnight Review at 11, Bonnie Greer, Tom Paulin and Miranda Sawyer join me to discuss paintings of America then in an exhibition of landscape pioneers. The book about America now, which publishers attempted to censor Australian sexual politics in a new West End play, and does an Oscar-nominated film about a Nobel-winning mathematician add up? The Hashmi family of Moortown in Leeds are the latest to have the boundaries of morally acceptable science adjusted on their behalf. Official sanction for their plan to ensure their next child has the right cells to help their son Zane came today from the HFEA. The Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority decided it was comfortable with the Hashmis using IVF to pre-select their next child so his or her umbilical cord can give Zane the right material to cure him. The phrase, design a baby, is already being banded about by critics, but is that a slogan or a real objection? Here's our science editor, Susan Watts. Three-year-old Zane Hashmi has a rare genetic blood disorder that will kill him unless his doctors act fast. Tonight's go-ahead will allow his family to create Britain's first officially sanctioned baby born with the hope of a cure for its older sibling. The case has taken months to get the green light and Zane's consultant is relieved the wait's over. I'm very delighted specifically for the Hashmi family because it's been a, a long road for them and they've been trying to achieve something that is of momentous importance for them as a family and Zane in particular. But I'm also pleased for reproductive medicine because I think it is a step in the right direction using IVF technology uh, for these sorts of particular very specific cases. The authorities gave the technique the go-ahead in principle at the end of last year, but they want each case approved in its own right. This is because some fear it's a combination of technologies that will open the door for couples to seek babies with a shopping list of characteristics. One very disturbing aspect of this procedure is that human life is being created as a as a means to, to, to an end, not as an end in itself. It's being created to help, uh, in this case, another sibling. And people may feel that, that this is, is, is a legitimate reason. But once one's conceded the principle that human life can be created uh, for other purposes, then it's very difficult to see where one should draw the line. The process involves two steps. The first is straightforward IVF, creating a number of embryos in the lab. These are screened to rule out those carrying any genetic defect. The remaining embryos are then screened a second time to find those with an immune signature that matches the sick child. These embryos are implanted in the mother with the hope that at least one will grow into a baby and perfect donor. The technique was first used in the case of Molly Nash from Colorado. Cord blood from her brother Adam was transplanted straight into Molly and is reported to have brought her a near-perfect recovery. Whilst fertility techniques are proceeding apace in the US, experts here are increasingly frustrated with what they see as the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority's grindingly slow approach. In the past, the HFEA has very much dragged its feet over many, many issues. They almost seem to see themselves as guardians of public morality. And on this basis, they have always been very, very negative. The Hashmi's case is being billed as Britain's first designer baby. In fact, it will not be a designer baby since the scientists aren't altering the embryo. And it won't be a British first because just last week, a baby girl was born by the same process to a family hoping to treat their older child who has leukemia. 
This family's consultant is Mohamed Taranisi. He's well known for breaking boundaries in fertility technology. Just last month, he told Newsnight of astonishing research on human embryos that could one day allow two women to have a baby that's genetically related to both of them. He's close to opening a London clinic to offer the Hashmi technique to other British couples and has said he'll go ahead with or without the authorities say so. Dr. Fischel fears that if some fertility doctors disregard the official guidelines, it will turn the public against a host of reproductive advances, just as opponents are beginning to be won over. I'm concerned that it does the, uh, the, what we're trying to achieve and the profession harm. It harms patients who will use uh, doctors to go through the right procedures. As far as uh, anybody who wants to, to do this without going through the HFEA is concerned, um, and uh, I think really they have an issue with the HFEA and it would be the, for the HFEA to decide whether or not they can maintain their license and they can practice in the UK if they take that approach. So I just hope they don't bring this whole thing down. But for the Hashmis at least, today's decision, despite the wait, will be cause for celebration. And as more and more families, each with their own moving tail, reap the benefits of this technology, it will be harder for opponents to argue against it. Susan Watts reporting, we did ask the HFEA to come on and talk to us about today's case, but not for the first time. They declined to be interviewed by us, saying they had made the decision and did not want to talk of, about it further. However, we are joined by Dr. Mohamed Taranisi, who, as he told Newsnight in December, and as we heard in that report, is planning a clinic that will offer this procedure and, and planning to go ahead with it regardless. I don't think I'd said that. What I said is I believe that the HFEA can give you a license to, to take a, a cell from the embryo, but once you've taken the cell from the embryo, what kind of test you do on the cell is, is not under the uh, HFEA jurisdiction. That's what I said. Oh, so they, it, there's a loophole there, you think? I think there is, yeah. But I mean, if we can do this with the approval of the HFEA, I don't think anybody will object to that. And let me just tell you one other thing. What the HFEA has announced today is not for the treatment to be carried in this country. What they've actually given permission to is for this treatment to be carried in the States. That's what mo probably most people do not realize. These embryos are not going to be screened in this country. They're going to be screened in the United States. But what we heard Mr. Dr. Fischel saying there, that the doctor who's actually involved in this particular case, is that he's worried about people, possibly yourself, going ahead uh, without the HFEA's uh, permission because that actually may turn the public off. No, I, didn't, I don't think anybody have ever said that. I think it makes headlines and it makes sort of people sort of like yourself sort of find a, an argument to talk about. Well, he said, I, I hope you just don't go ahead regardless because that will set us back. No, we're not, we're not going to go ahead regardless because we've already done this. We've already got a patient who had given birth last week. This was the second baby that has been born in, in the world as a result of this treatment. There is already three pregnancies at various stages of the pregnancy in the world. So this treatment is already established and, and, and nobody can question that. So when Ruth Deitch, the chair of the HFEA, says this does not, the decision today does not set a precedent, the authority will only approve the treatment in very rare circumstances and under strict controls, what do you say to that? Yeah, I mean, nobody, nobody disapproves of this. I think there are conditions and I think they are fair conditions. But what I'm just trying to but say... But you wouldn't submit yourself to them? No, I would. I mean, the, I have no problem with the conditions that have been set up with the HFE. What I'm trying to say is, instead of making a big story about sending embryos to be screened in the United States, what I'm trying to say, we need to be able to do the whole treatment in this country. All these big headlines today is about embryos that are going to be screened in the States. We would like to be able to do this treatment here. So if it is okay to do it in the States, why it is wrong to do it as a whole in this country. Are you happy with the way the HFEA operates? Do you think they're quick enough off the mark? I don't think they are quick enough, but I think these are very, very sort of new issues, and I think it, it's fair to spend some time looking at them, but also, if you are in a position of responsibility, you need to be able to make the tough decisions. People are always talking about slippery slopes, and particularly looking to the next stage. Um, what if it was the, were the case, uh, if the baby in the situation was not giving up a, a piece of umbilical cord, but actually after being born had to give some of its bone marrow to help its brother, would that be all right? Okay, what if this is already happening? If, if one of the existing children was an exact match and he was asked to give bone marrow to the, to the affected child... But if the embryo was selected on that basis... Yeah, well, what I'm trying to say this could have happened in, uh, now, even without creating embryos. Because what people do, they first of all go and look for an exact match within the family. And if there was an exact match, and this could have been another 
a brother or a sister or whatever, he would have been asked to, to, to donate. But birth. you don't have a problem with selecting the embryo on that, on that basis? No, I don't. We, we do what select about selecting an embryo to create a child that would give uh, a kidney? No, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I mean, we, we're taking the issue far from its context. What we're trying to say here is you are selecting a, a, an embryo that will bring hope into a very desperate situation. I don't think anybody can disagree with this. I mean, if you have a child yourself who was ill, and this was the only way of, of helping it, what would you have done? What about if you have, just looking into the future here, uh, a child, uh, or at least you were asked to select the embryo on the basis that you have several in your Petri dish, and uh, you want to select one that does not suffer from what is commonly known as dwarfism. Would you select on that basis? Well, any, any medical condition that, that is treatable in this way, yes, I will do it. Well, we're talking about medical condition, disease, because this is what medicine is all about. We're not about choosing the color of the hair or, or the size of the ears or anything like that. That's not what we're trying to do. Do you think uh, the HFEA is ready to let you select on that basis? Well, they've already approved it. I think in principle, I don't think that, that this is a matter for controversy. It's already been approved. Would you, uh, you, would, you would not select the most intelligent embryo if there were a test for that? Well, you, well, there is no test for that, so this is all sort if, of... No, if there were one. No, there wasn't. There, there isn't, and I don't think it's in the foreseeable future as well. So to, to just to try and argue about something that is non-existent, just to try and, 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 and make it sound sort of, uh, I don't know, interesting to people, that's, that's not a responsible way of looking at things. But it is quite interesting to quite a lot of people. Dr. Tarisi, thank you very much indeed.